Hello and welcome to Digging with Dugan. Today, we're going to be beginning our Rome series by talking about pre-Rome in Italy. By pre-Roman, we're meaning pre-Roman conquest. Um, the story might begin before, really, Rome's founding. Uh, once we get talking about the right and proper history of Rome, it all supposedly begins. I say supposedly, because this part of history is semi-mythical, and... and sparsely recorded as a result of a sacking that will happen later in the story. Uh, but early beginning, the Romans are not a, not the most authoritative of peoples in Italy. Italy is incredibly cut up in all directions, pressed on all sides. The Gauls in the north, the Carthaginians in Sicily, and uh, in the islands off the western coast. And you have the Magna Graecia to the southeast, with the Greeks coming in and many different city-states establishing colonies. Uh, you have the Latins, of course, the Samnites, the Etrurians, the Etruscans, the Boii. All sorts of different groups of different languages and ethnicities populated Italy. Uh, none of which really get along with each other. Now, there is concepts of language and ethnicity, but these are kind of almost subconscious. Uh, for example, the Etruscans and Etruria and all that. They saw themselves as a conjoined group, but they hardly ever acted as one unless there was a massive threat. Uh, and at the end of the day, for most of these groups that will find themselves conquered, uh, it seems to be their lack of centralization and their lack of uh, unified identity that initially saw themselves as one group until it became obvious because they were being conquered by a different group uh, for a lot of peoples. That, that winds up being the short version. But I guess we'll start with the mythical founding with Romulus and Ramus. Uh, I don't want to ramble on too much about the surrounding areas as I'm liable to get lost. Uh, I don't know. I know a lot about them, but it's not a straight line, so try not to shoot off in too many different directions. We'll encounter peoples as they bump up against us, I suppose. Now, early Roman history, of course, begins with a very bizarre story that we can't really believe, but we have nothing to replace it with. Uh, there's several stories in a time with this. Later, the story of Troy will be tied into it. Uh, but needless to say, there's two boys who are supposedly descended of the god of war, or of Hercules, uh, or of uh, this escaped semi-divine descendant of Hercules who runs from the ruling city of Troy. And so, anyways, famous babies. Magical powers, maybe. Uh, leg they're lost and abandoned by the riverside until they are protected and suckled by a she wolf. Um, there's some scholars, there's this bizarre claim about the wolf thing being because the person who raises them's wife was a prostitute named Wolf. I don't and it lend any credence to that, but. I'll mention it, because some people do. Uh, regardless, Wolf uh, suckles them, protects them, until a farmer discovers the babies, and the wolf backs off. And uh, they take the wolf in. The wolf will be on Roman military standards. It will be a symbol of Rome. Uh, it will later be replaced by the eagle. But in the early days, the wolf definitely symbol, the Velutes will, you know, spear throwing units, they will have wolf, you know, wolf caps on their heads. Uh, I assume that has its origins there. Uh, anyways, onwards. <laughs> uh, so the babies are raised, and they grow up, uh, and they move to settle a colony. I don't remember if there's some sort of a story on how that happens, but they jump to them settling the colony together, Romulus and Ramus are their names. Um, and this colony is 
calling you misfits and criminals. And they literally, their, their calling card is, come here, we'll take anybody. Uh, don't care what you did, just be good and live here. And we'll settle in an amazing city. And they settled down. Uh, and first, there's an, there's an argument over the Palatine and the Avertine Hills. Um, Romulus is on the Palatine, I believe. And uh, Ramus on the Avertine. They have a very Roman uh, argument about who is more divinely favored through the prediction of birds. Um, first, one of them sees like six vultures, and the other one, and it lands close to their hill. And the other one sees eleven vultures, and it lands on their hill. And they argue over whose divine sign is better, and uh, this begins the saltiness between the brothers. And, uh, so they go off in different directions, founding separate settlements. Uh, Romulus for defensiveness, and Ramus for the use of the river. Uh, and after a while of arguing, Ramus sees Romulus building a little wall, and he's in a particularly antagonistic mood. So he goes up to his brother and, uh, mocks his stupid little wall. It's so useless anybody could cross it. And he hops right over the wall, and Romulus, in good appropriate Roman fashion, whips out his sword and fucking slits his brother's throat right there over the wall. And supposedly cries out, uh, So too shall fall anybody who crosses my primarium. Uh, <laughs> uh, so the city of Rome, after Romulus and now Ramus, is founded through an act of patricide. Uh, <laughs> and, uh, uh, the Romans, they told this one themselves. So this... Almost all male city of thieves and murderers is founded by chief murderer Romulus, who's the king. Mind you, this is the kingdom. Uh, and the king's first act of business is, uh, well, frankly, to get some bitches. <laughs> uh, this is an all-dude colony, and that's kind of a problem. Uh, so he goes around propositioning the local communities for wives. Uh, but none of them will give them any wives because it's the colony of crooks and thieves and murderers and criminals and didn't you just murder your brother? <laughs> what would I give you my daughter? You're, you don't seem like a very reputable person so no one will marry the Romans probably rightfully <laughs> uh, so Romulus, presumably him we don't know who comes up with this idea but the ploy is devised to get wives with the Romans. The Sabines, uh, a tribe to the north, uh, they are played a trick. Let me check the name of this river here real quick. Uh, it is... I don't seem to see a name here anyways. Um, there's a river that runs through with past Rome, and it connects the Roman territory to the Sabine territory. And... Um, and the Romans take a ship off that river, and they set up shop inside of the territory of the Sabines. And they basically, it's, it's all tailored for women to attract young women who want to buy jewelry and dresses and wedding gowns and, you know, blah, blah, blah. And they wait until there's a suitable amount of women they're browsing and buying. And at the sound of signal, they grab all the women and they throw them on the ship and they sail away as fast as they can. Uh, having just stolen a bunch of women, uh, the Sabines, of course, don't take kindly to this. The brothers and husbands and fathers of the abducted women take to arms, and they march to Rome, and they're fighting a battle just outside the city, which the Romans are apparently losing. Um, it takes a supreme amount of time to get there, not quickly, uh, but because, I say that, because when they arrive, supposedly, when the Romans are losing, and the battle's at its peak. The Sabine women, the captives, come running out, holding their rape babies, and beg the their fathers and brothers to stop killing the fathers of their children, uh, be, because no matter who wins this conflict, you know, there will be orphans. Um, eh. 
And so Rome is formed through successful kidnapping of a bunch of women who were basically not saved in time. And so as a circumstance of the failure to save them, they begged for the war to end. And it's kind of messed up. <laughs> uh, this is the story the Romans told about themselves. So, yeah. We'll be talking about the Romans because they will become the most prominent people in the world. And we really can't avoid talking about them. And the truth is, most of the stuff we say about everybody else we get from them or through them or has been edited by them because they were conquered by the Romans. So, we gotta talk about the Romans. Despite them being the brother murdering, wife stealing, <laughs> evil bastards that they were. All nations have a rather rough beginning, as we'll see. Not that things in the late side of Rome will be all, you know, doilies and politeness, but there'll be slightly less wife stealing later. Uh, and so Romulus is king and starts the city of Rome. Fitting place to end it. Uh, there will be other kings. Is Numa, I think think is next. No, it's somebody else. No, I think there's two more before Numa. There's a Pompilia. Anyways, we have a couple, we have five kings, as the story goes. The kings are almost certainly fictional. The dates list them all as living this perfect length of time, and they're all contributed as having well-rounded sort of uh, personalities, which are too convenient. Uh, some of them are certainly real, especially the last one, Tarquin the Proud. But, uh, so yeah, I know that, you know, still in fiction land, but not much to place it with. Obviously, due to some of the brutal nature of these stories, I myself doubt that the Romans would make make up a story in which they themselves are wife-stealing brother murderers. So, there's, tr there's some truth to it. <laughs> well, this has been Digging with Dugan. Uh, Love to spend time with you. Have a nice evening.